Hey, what's going on, family? It's Lachlan here, and yes, it is time again for Command Blocks are Awesome. Because why? Because they're very awesome. So what we're going to do is do some very basics today and just kind of teach you about usage functions and also about game rules. You need to know these things first before we can get into the fun stuff. Boring stuff first, then fun stuff after that. But once you get to know what these do and how these work, I think you'll really enjoy what I'm showing you here. So, all right, so here's what we're going to do is go over usage functions. So right here we have at P, at R, at A. At P basically selects nearest player, at R selects a random player, at A selects all players. So also later on in the series, I'm going to show you guys some even more in-depth functions where you can take and designate a radius that it picks where that player is. So you can actually say at a certain spot, you can actually say at a certain coordinates and you can say the radius around that coordinates and it'll pick that player in those coordinates and do whatever you want. So like for instance, I'll give you an idea of what it does. So let's put a command block down here. We're going to put that there and we're going to trigger it with that there. Real easy. So we're going to go like this. We're going to do slash say, okay. And then for instance, we're going to say we can only use at P or at A because I'm the only person on this single player world. Now, if we were on a server, you could use at R and it would pick a random player. So we're going to just do at P and then we're going to say hello, just like that. And then hit done. Just like that. And if we click it, it should say Lucklin MCWB hello. So watch. Oh, there we go. There we go. Lucklin MCWB hello. That darn creative mode. So that was pretty cool. So now watch this. If you take, come here. And if we just take off the at P, just like that, hit done, and then do it again, it says hello. So the first one is like the server telling you hello because it's directing it towards a person. And then the next one is like you saying hello. So that's pretty good stuff for role-playing elements. Okay, now watch this. Let's go over here. So remember, at P is the nearest player, at R is a random player, at A is all players. So let's go to our game rules. Let's look at game rules. So we have first game rule, mob griefing. So this is kind of self-explanatory, mob griefing. So what is mob griefing? So let's go ahead and let's do this. Let's go um, true. So right now, mob griefing is set to true. So watch what happens. So we come over here, take a creeper, just like so, hit him in the face with a block. He doesn't like that at all. And he blows up the ground. What a jerk. Now, remember, you see these blocks here, too. Let's keep that in mind also. Okay, so now let's go over here and let's do mob griefing set to false. Now let's put him down again right here. And then let's hit him in the head with a block. See if he likes that. Oh, but guess what? He doesn't blow anything up. So there you go. That's the way to turn mob griefing off. On, it can be your single player world. You can do it at any time. You can have this switchboard in your wall and turn these rules on and off and you kind of like customize your own world. It's kind of neat. So that also includes any mob griefing. That's Enderman taking blocks and that's creepers blowing up. So it's pretty cool stuff. All right, so now we're going to keep that on false. Then we're going to go to the next one. So right now we're going to keep this one on false. So this is called keep inventory. So this keeps your inventory on death. So watch, here's what I have in my inventory. So if I do this, I do like this and respawn. Now watch. Go over here and there's all my stuff laying all over the ground. That did hurt. That hurt a lot. So let's grab everything, pick it back up, pick my pride off the ground. Then come over here and say, okay, now keep inventory true. So I've come here, slash kill, and there's my inventory. It did not come out. Now you can keep it. So now you give the player the ability to keep their inventory on death so they don't lose everything. So it's really good for adventure maps. Okay, so now let us let me show you how this looks in the back here because I got to show some, some different points here. Okay, so this is how it's written out. Slash game rule. Always remember when you're writing a game rule, it's slash game rule space and then whatever the rule is and then whatever the rule is, true or false. So for instance... Keep inventory. Now you notice it on keep inventory, the K in keep is lowercase and the I in inventory is uppercase. This is case sensitive. This will not work if you mess this up. So you have to do it exactly how it shows you right here. So you do game rule, keep inventory, false. And then at that point, if I die, I won't keep my inventory. So let's come over here. 
and then let's look at do tile drops. Now remember what I told you before about the hole, the creeper hole. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn mob griefing back on like so. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to put another creeper down and punch him in the face. Now, you see those blocks down there? Okay, now let's do this. Watch, come over here. And we're going to do, let's see, do tile drops false. So come here, put another creeper down, and punch him in the face. Now you notice no blocks fell that time. So that's another way to keep from lagging out like your worlds and stuff when, you know, when a lots of blocks are being laid on the ground. This has the ability to make it so no blocks are on the ground anymore. It's pretty cool. All right, so then we go, let's do do mob spawning. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is mob spawn and don't spawn. So watch this. So let's do this. We are going to change. Oh, I have an idea too. So watch this. So this is my daytime button, and I'll show you how I did this. You can do slash time set 1200. So we're going to hit done, and I want to come over here and show this part also. So we're going to do uh, command block output true and command block output false. So right now, if I have hit this, watch what happens. It says set the time to 1200. So there we go. Time is set to 1200. Now, if I come over here and I say command block output false, if I hit that, so this is good for changing stuff behind the scenes without the player knowing anything about the, what you're changing. So like you can hit this again and it doesn't do it, but it does set the sun. See how it sets it? So that's a good way of doing sneaky stuff behind the player's back in a custom map or, or whatever, stuff like that. So here's what I want to show. Let's go ahead and let's leave this to true. Okay, and that's going to let you know when a game rule has been updated at this point. So what we're going to do is we are going to construct a new one. So we'll say here and put this one. Actually, we'll put it here like so, like that. We want to do slash time set night. Okay, and done. Let's put this down just like this and put a button. And so hit it. And we should have nighttime. So there we go. Now it's set to night. Let's grab some torches out so we can see a little bit because we want mobs to spawn. That's the whole point of this is for mobs to spawn. So let's lay these out here. Just there and over here. So let's see what we have. All right, I see some cows. Let's make sure that it's on, first of all. Mob spawning, true. Okay. Mob spawning true is on. So let's give it a little bit. See what happens. Let's go find some mobs. There we go. Creepers, spiders, everything spawning there. So if we come down here and we do mob spawning false. Okay, now what's going to happen is all these will still stay here. But that's it. Once these are gone, they won't come back. So there will be no mobs that spawn. Matter of fact, watch this. We'll put it in peaceful. We'll get rid of them. And then we'll put it back. Okay, and now, watch. If you come around here, you'll notice that no mobs are spawning whatsoever. Because that's what happens. We have now disabled mob spawning on the, on the world. Now, this won't disable, this will only disable aggressive mobs. This will not disable passive mobs. Alright, so let's see. Here's another one, self-explanatory. Do mob loot. So what this does is this makes mobs drop loot or not drop loot. Simple as that. So if you do, do mob loot true, they'll drop it. If you do it false, they won't drop it. Now let's go see. Let's go test it out. Let's go. What do we want here? Let's go grab some eggs. See how many of these we can kill. And then here, just like so. And let's go ahead and spawn a truckload of zombies. Okay, so let's spawn the zombies. Now, let's start killing them. Now you notice what's happening right now is they're not dropping anything. You notice that, right? Okay, now watch this. So go over here and go do mob loot true, like so. Now watch. There we go, there's some zombie meat he didn't drop anything he was cheap oh he didn't drop nothing either stop being cheap there we go there's some more meat 
So what that does is that makes it so mobs don't drop any loot whatsoever. So it's good for, like, if you want to do a controlled environment inside of a uh, custom map where you don't want the mobs to drop anything that would help the player, you know, advance. Like, if you don't want them to have any food and you want to be the one that supplies the food, you make the mobs not drop anything so they don't drop food. So you're the one that's supplying the food for them. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's go over here. Do fire tick. All right, so do fire tick true. So let's do this. Let's actually turn on the lights. There we go. Lights on. So now let's go here and let's grab, where's it at? Tools. Flint and steel. So let's put this tree on fire. So watch. Now we are in easy, so let's fix that real fast. Let's do that in hard. And let's let the fire spread. Let's let these guys burn. So, all right, so the fire is now spreading. See how it's ticking? So this is called a fire tick. So what it's going to do is it's spreading. It's burning the tree down little by little. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn do fire tick to false. Just like this. And we're going to set this tree on fire. Now watch. As you can see, that tree is not spreading anymore. This one's not catching on fire. And this one's not spreading anymore. So now you can basically turn off fire so then fire doesn't burn anything in your maps that's wood that's trees that's whatever so this one's just naturally decaying now but this one's not burning at all see that at all so these are some really important things these are called game rules inside of minecraft for command blocks and the way that you do these i'm going to say it again say it again i can't say it enough is slash game rule then space the rule that you want and then if it's true or false now remember that these rules are case sensitive. So you see this one, it says do mob spawning. So do D is lowercase, mob is uppercase, spawning is uppercase. You have to make sure you remember those things. So yeah, so that's it. And also these over here, these right here, these functions here, which is at P, which is the nearest player, at R, which is a random player, and at A, which is all players. So yeah, I hope you guys found this part of command blocks are awesome, helpful. And uh, if you have any ideas on things you would like to see as we start progressing in this series, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Also, you guys, if you really like this series, please remember to support it and give it a thumbs up and show it to your friends. Share it with everybody because I really think that this is going to be a great series. And you know what? Command blocks are awesome. So I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Bye.